So now that we've constructed a vector space V, we can just as equally construct another vector space, I'll call it W, and this W being its own vector space independent of V is going to have its own set of vector addition and scalar multiplication options. I'm doing these in different colors now so that we're absolutely 100% sure which vector space we're talking about when we write down vectors or we write down their particular addition or scalar multiplication operation. The vectors in V are completely independent of the vectors in W. It would make no sense, say, to take a vector V from V and a vector W from W and ask, say, what is V plus W? Well, first of all, how can you even write this down? You need to use one of the vector addition operations. So you would either write V plus W with the purple plus or V red plus W. But this is meaningless to write down since you recall that addition was defined as a map from two elements in the vector space back into the same vector space. This expression is meaningless because V comes from the V vector space and W from the W vector space. We need two vectors from the same vector space in order to add them. So we have these two independent sets of vectors. They're just a set of elements. We can as we've seen before, construct a map between these two sets. So we could consider constructing a map, I'm going to call it lambda, which takes a vector from one space and gives you another vector in the other vector space. So we would write this as, for all the vectors in V, there is, there exists some W in our other vector space, W, such that this V is mapped to the W by the action of this map lambda. So this is a common notation for a map, just a sort of function-esque notation. This is perfectly fine, although we're actually, for our cases, going to find it more instructive to adopt a kind of brackety type notation. So I'm going to use the following notation for a map. So this, this expression here is equivalent to this expression. I've just adopted a slightly uh, more useful notation for our purposes in that we write the name of the map in this kind of bracket object, which then has a slot for the the element which is being mapped and then this gives us the result of our map whatever it is so don't get confused by this it's just a fancier way of writing essentially the same information you need the name of the map the object which is being acted on by the map and then whatever the result is so this gives us a way to relate the vectors from one space to the vectors of another space. The map, of course, we'll have to define concretely in practice. We're just being abstract about how we've defined it now. But in order to make this map a useful map, we're going to need to impose some restrictions on the type of map that we could create. And that is that the map has to be a linear map. So what does that mean? Essentially, given two vectors, now I'm going to be careful with the colors here, so I'm going to take two vectors, I'm going to call them A and B, which are two vectors from V. Now if I consider the map lambda, which uh, as we had it before is a map from V to W, so the map lambda and now I'm going to act on the sum of these two vectors, making sure that I'm adding them together using the V addition. So I add them together, act on them with this map lambda, which we know should take us uh, into the W space. So everything I write over here is going to exist in the W space. So 
for this to be a linear map, we require that the its action on a, a vector addition splits up in the following way, that we just have the map acting on the individual vector. And now this is added to, but using the addition in W, since we're defining this lambda takes us from V into W, this is something in W, so we can only add it to something else in W, which is the map acting on the other vector. OK, so this is one requirement that the map must satisfy. And then also, if we have, say, a vector in V, so the other requirement is that if we map a vector which is a scalar multiple, so I'm going to say lambda times a, this is just the same thing as the same scalar, but now because the result must be in w, it's using the w scalar multiplication since the map acting on a gives us a result which is in W. So even though the scalar came from V, the result, the resulting scalar is acting on a vector which is in W, so we must be careful to use this W scalar multiplication. And I've kind of implicitly here, V and W are both defined over the same field, so it makes sense to write this down. So these two requirements, look fairly straightforward and self-explanatory. As long as our map satisfies this, it is a linear map. So again, I haven't told you anything about how to actually construct this map. We're just showing the properties that the map must satisfy. But given that this map satisfies these properties now, it becomes really easy to define or understand how the map acts because we only need to define how the map acts on the particular basis vectors of this space. So if we remember, we introduced a basis of V. So I'm going to call uh, the basis of V is going to be these EI vectors, which means that we can express any vector as the linear combination of such basis vectors. Now, if we consider how this vector will be acted on by the map, simply by the linearity of the map, we can easily write. So for any vector that you can give me, it will have a certain list of components with respect to each of the basis vectors. Since the map is linear, these components are pulled out of the map. And all we're left with is how the map acts on the particular basis vectors. So this is all we need to define to fully characterize the map for any vector in the space V. We simply need to define how the map acts on the basis vectors. Then by the linearity of the map, we can compute its result or its action on any vector. So then if you like, we can call this how the map acts on the basis vectors. We can use this to define or to realize what the basis is on the W space. If E is the basis on V, then how the map acts to take that basis into W will give us the, the basis vectors in W. OK, so what have we actually done? Well, we've constructed a map between the two sets, V and W. And now I'm going to start calling this HOM VW, which is simply just fancy terminology for the set of all maps between V and W. And they're not just any maps, they are these so-called linear maps, or in the slightly more fancier language, we call these homomorphisms. So what does this mean? Well, it's just a fancy way of saying uh, a structure preserving map, which means that if we begin with a certain type of algebraic structure, we construct a map that takes us into the same type of algebraic structure. So this HOM VW is the set of all maps which we can create between V and W, which preserve the vector space structure. We start with a vector space, we should only be able to map to a vector space. 
And the particular type of maps that do that are these so-called linear maps. So the homomorphisms between vector spaces are the linear maps. And now the key point is because these maps are linear in the sense that we can add them and scale and multiply them in this way, this means that the set of all homomorphisms, i.e. the set of all maps between two vector spaces, is itself a vector space. So I'll just repeat that again. So we construct the set of all maps. The maps are these elements which look like this. The set of all the possible maps which you could create between the two vector spaces, so long as they're structure preserving, that set itself is a vector space because we can add the maps in this uh, vectorial way and we can scale and multiply them as we would be able to any other vector. So this is going to be a really key point moving forward. The set of all structure preserving maps between two vector spaces is itself a vector space.